much to, uh, to look at uh, Psalms 142. That's Psalms, Psalms 142. Thank Mother Pat for that prayer. Thank you for that. Psalms 142. And again, I said, please pray for me that I'm able to close out in 1 John chapter 5. Verse 15, but more so verse 14 and 15, rather. All right, let's dive into this word. Psalms 142, and this is David writing while he was in the cave hiding from Saul who was trying to kill him. And this is what he opened up and said in Psalm 142. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my troubles. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path and the way wherein I have walked or in the way I walked have they laid proudly a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that knoweth that would knowest me. And then he says, Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. So here I go again. And I cried unto the Lord, unto thee, O Lord. And I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Untend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Go over, if you will, to 1 John chapter 5 and 14 verse. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we act anything according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Can you say amen? amen. I want you, if you will, lay on, on that. It says phone or camera. Can you click that switch to camera on the top so it can balance out the sound of the microphone boom there? Uh, I want to use for a topic, it's on the boom mic. Yes, the boom mic. It says, yeah. Okay, should turn on red. Okay, thank you. I want to use for a topic. God hears you. God hears you. If you try to read 
you're going to get lost. Because the way that I'm going to dissect this is that I'm going to be speaking about a whole overall type of thing. And if your eyes are fastened on what you're reading and you don't know exactly where I am, you're going to get lost. So kind of stay with me. But God hears you. It's common to us, it's very common for us as humans to think that whenever we have something going on in our life, rather it be bad or it be terrible, it's very common to us to always think that God is not listening to us because bad things is going on. It's very common for us to think that God is silent whenever we are dealing with a dilemma or we're facing some type of circumstance. We think he's silent. And when we think that God is silent, then we begin to go and try and do things on our own to make certain things happen for us. I, I, I take for a scenario, a woman... And I like to use a woman because of the fact that mostly women stand stronger than what men would stand when they're facing things. But I use for the scenario to get a picture in your mind. A woman who's carrying five children in her house as a single mother. And she's this single mother. She has to look out for her five children. And while she's looking out for her five children, she is praying, she's going to church, she's doing everything that she knows to do. But it seems like no matter all of the right things that she seemed to be doing, it seemed as if in that moment of her life, it's all wrong. She gets on her knees and she prays. She asks God to move and asks God to help her with her children, help her with her finances, help her if they're grandchildren to help her with that, help her with finding a job. She wants to come off of government assistance, but it's hard to find a job that will support her and her children. And as she's praying and she goes and joins a church and she gets this word from whoever is giving that word of the Lord that day, and it comes to her to say that God is getting ready to move in your life. When she hears that, she automatically locks in right now. It's common as a human to, to hear something and to fix it in your mind right now. It wasn't told to her that God is going to move right now. It said that God is getting ready to move and fixing to move in your life. But it does not say how he planned on moving and when he planned on moving and where he planned on moving in your life. It just said that God is getting ready or fixing to move in your life. So she goes on and she locks in the word right now. And when she leaves that place of worship, let's say that it does not happen for her right then. Now she's challenged. Her faith is challenged. Her belief in God is challenged. That word that she heard is being challenged. And yet, if it does not come to pass when she needed to the most, she's most likely to either struggle with still holding on, or she's going to struggle trying to believe that God is speaking for real. And I brought that to the light because you have many people who can hear a word like God is getting ready. And it seems like that God has to go and prepare. But I'm here to tell you today that God doesn't have to prepare to do anything. He don't even really have to take on a thought because before the thought ever become a thought, God was already thinking. So he don't need thoughts in order to think because he's always thinking. And he thinks aforehand. That's why I'm sure to say whatsoever things are written aforetime are written for our learnings. 
Whenever you hear a word like God is getting ready, do not fix it in your mind to believe that that getting ready is right now. Because if God is getting ready, then you need to go back to God and say the word that I received was that you're getting ready. And Lord, I need to make my petition before thee so that in the process of it coming to pass in my life, you are actually getting me ready. I want you to stay with me here. You see, 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 God does not go and get things ready for us. He speaks those things which be not as though they are. And what he does is he prepares us to be ready for whatever it is that he has in store for us. David, on one hand, was already in the realm of God when God prophesied to Samuel and spoke to him and said, Go and anoint for me a king who I have anointed. That's a prophecy. That means it was already, y'all ain't with me, is you? It was already done before Samuel ever got to David's. And it was done before Samuel ever got to Jesse's house. That's why when Jesse looked and talked to Samuel and brought all of his sons and he anointed them, Abinadab, and he anointed Absalom them, and he anointed the rest of the brothers, and God told them, don't look at their statue because you look at the outer, but God looks at the heart. And then what God goes and do is, he says to, to, to Samuel, he said, that's not it. So Samuel tells Jesse, wait, none of these men are the ones that God has, choose, has chosen, rather. I want for you to give me your last one because I know there's somebody else in here. And what he says is, yeah, I got one more, but he's out there in this field as a shepherd boy. I'm trying to give you men and you want to go after the boy. But I'm here to tell you, it does not matter the age difference with God. When God calls you, he calls and prepares you even in the position you are in no matter where you are. So when David comes in and Samuel takes the oil that's in the horn's ram, or the ram's horn rather, and he pours it on him, it begins to run just like the scripture said it would. It ran down his face, down the side, went down the garment, come down to the hem, and that's how he knew that's who the Lord has chosen. I'm here to tell you this right here, is that when God chooses you, before the foundation of the world, everything that he chose about you is going to come, no matter if it's good, bad, ugly, or worse. But the greater thing about it is, is that God chose you, but he didn't choose the things. Oh, y'all, y'all got to stay with me here. He chose you. So if he chose you and not the things, that means you are greater than the things that's coming against you. You are greater than the things that you are facing. Why? Because God chose you. The problem with us is, as an individual, is that when God began to speak to us, we sometimes feel like uh, that's not of him. And then when we speak to him, we feel like we don't have the right to say that to him. Come on, get somebody. David said, I poured out my complaint. But the, the way we grew up was that you could not go to God murmuring, bickering, or neither could you go to him complaining. And if you grew up like I grew up in one of the extraordinarily traditional churches, they told me you don't question God. But how can I get an answer if I never ask my father who is in heaven a question? I have not because I have not. So I need to learn how to ask. David said in Psalms 142, I want you to see this here because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down in some simplest form. He said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. I cried unto the Lord. David did not say that I allowed myself to go to other people and cry to them. But I took this to God because David was reflecting back on the times that God was always winning battles through him and for him. And now since he's at a place in his life where he feels as if Saul and his men, which are the persecutors, are greater and stronger than him, he's forgotten how God subdued kingdoms. 
he has forgotten how God used him to go to the city of Ziklag mm -hmm. and take that city by force and overthrow the men that was over there burning down the city. He forgot how God allowed Jonathan to come and give him a word and say, hey, my dad is trying to kill you. Go down this way. He forgot how God used him to slay Goliath and cut off his head with just his sword but use a stone to slay the giant. He forgot. He forgot how God chose him from the field and brought him into the palace as a king at an early age. He forgot. And oftentimes, that's us. We seem to let the goodness of God and all that he has brought us through escape us. But this is our year and our time of reflection to go back and start reflecting on those things that God heard us about. Just like he told Solomon, when you prayed the first time, I heard you. You don't have to pray to me over and over the same thing. When you prayed the prayer seven years ago, I heard that. I'm answering it according to my will. Because my will and your faith has to line up together. Because if you're still confused about who I am, then I, won't, I can work a will in your life, but you still be confused. I don't need you to be confused. I need you to be clearer on what I'm doing. Because if you're confused about what I'm doing, you're still not going to understand and you're not going to see me. And that's the struggle that many people have. They are confused about what God is doing. So therefore, they don't have a clear view of what God is saying. You got to understand that God's doing in his saying got to line up together. If it's of the Lord, when he say it, he's going to do just what he said he's going to do. He's not a man that he shall lie. That's the same. Neither is the son of man that he shall repent. He don't have to do that. Because if he said it, it shall come to pass. That means whatever God said to you, you got to fight to keep it and then you got to fight to keep the devil out of it. Because the devil gets in it when God says it. And he tries to challenge it and make it look as if what God said is not of God. No, that's not of God. That can't be of the Lord. And then you go and question, do God even hear me? I'm down here on earth. I'm crying out. Do he hear me? I'm about to lose my mind. Do God hear me? All this chaos and commotion, do he hear me? But you just wanted to know, did God hear us during COVID season? He heard. He heard us. But the question ain't so much as to is God hearing us? Or are we hearing God? Because we got mothers who want to get a better start in life. Fathers who want to start a fresh in life. But you can't get a better start without God. And you can't start a fresh without the Lord. Because you're going to come down that same road over and over. Until you put God there. All right. That's why the scripture tells us to make him preeminent in our life. In other words, make him first. Because the scripture said, it's not that you have chosen me, but that I have chosen you. And if God have chosen you, then you can't go and do nothing for him because he wants to do everything for you. And it ain't because you say, I love you, God. No, God loved you first, and now you're able to love God back. With what? The same love that God put in you, which is the agape love. You love God the way God loves you, and the way God loves you is unconditionally. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Lord. And now God said, I wonder do they hear me? They cried out to me to open the church back up. And I opened the church, but yet they still went on Zoom and they still went live and still was talking about cash happening. They didn't hear me. What happened to the storehouse in the church? What happened to the hospitality in the church? We cry out to God. But can anybody hear Jesus crying out to us? We asking God for all kinds of things. Stuff. Want him to make 
make a way out of no way, he already had. Wanting to heal our body, he already did. Wanting to fix our heart, he already done that. Because if you ask him to do it again, he say, I'll do it again and I'll do it again. But what are you going to do when I do it? Are you going to stop your way and turn to my way? Because there is a way that seems right unto a man. They go for a woman too. There is a way that seems right. But the end thereof is destruction. It's destruction down that road when you walk alone. It's easy to face God. I mean, easy to face the devil, rather, and got God to fight with you. Then it is to face God and ain't got nobody there that can stay with you. David said, I'm running from Saul and I'm scared. I'm going to be honest. I'm scared. That's David. He said, yeah. So I'm going to pour out my complaint. And I can guarantee you some of the complaint went like this. How can you let Saul come after me? You told me that you was going to raise me up to be king and Saul was going to be subdued. But it ain't happened yet. Because all of a sudden, Saul is coming after me. God, I prophesied and I didn't even touch Saul when I had the chance. I could have killed him. I could have wasted him. I looked at Nahab them and I told Nahab and, and I told Joab them, look, do not touch Saul. Touch not the Lord's anointing. Neither do his prophet no harm. I didn't even do nothing to him. I spared him. I was merciful unto him. And as I was merciful unto him, he didn't show me the same mercy. He's out to kill me. Life is out to kill me. Anything that got said and connected to it in life is out to destroy me. But the enemy come not but to. But I come that to have life and have it more abundantly. You got to know that when God hears you and you're asking God for a thing, quit trying to put a time frame on God. This is not a too many God we serve. And if you really check the record, what's taking you a thousand years to get to, it takes him one day. He already done it. All right. But when do it come to pass? It comes to pass when you start walking in your proclamation and start proclaiming it and you start walking in manifestation right. and start seeing it. That means sometimes we got to shut up on what we want and we got to start expecting it to come because we're looking for it. I'm not going to tell you everything that I'm looking for God to do for me that I went and found my petition with God. All I'm going to do is start expecting it. So when it comes to pass, I sit there and tell the devil, you missed it, but God did it again. All right. You tried to block it, but God did it again. Yeah. Most of the time, let me give you a secret here. It ain't a secret once I give it to you. But most of the time, Satan will block your vision. Because you run your mouth too much. Let me say that again. Satan will block your vision because you run in your mouth too much. You always telling folks what you about to do. You always telling folks what's getting ready to what's your next move. Who did that? Joseph did that. Joseph got to the point. He had to be quiet. He couldn't go and tell nobody that the angel of the Lord visited him and told him to get up and take Mary, your engaged wife to be, and that unborn child with her that she's carrying and go and flee. He couldn't tell nobody. He just had to get up and do. Y'all thought I'm talking about Joseph from the Old Testament. I'm talking about Joseph, the, the stepfather of Jesus. He could not tell nobody. That day he had to get up in the middle of the night and go. He was just quiet, quiet. That's some things God trying to wake you up in the middle of the night about. But you're too stubborn to move. You've been asking God to do something for you, but something's not going to come in the daytime. Okay. Sometimes it's just going to fall upon you in the wee night hour. Yeah. When everything is quiet. When everybody else is asleep. Yeah. It's going to come that way. Watch what David said. He said, I'll pour out my complaint. Before him, I showed before him my trouble. Anybody got any troubles that's in your way? Show them to God. Write your troubles down. What's troubling you? Write it down. And then, guess what? When you write it down, leave it 
on your bed if you want to. Because he takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. It looks real foolish, Leroy, to be sitting up there writing down a bunch of stuff that's troubling you. And then put it on your bed like you leaving a ladder for sound. That looks real foolish. Why are you sitting at the dinner table writing? Because I'm writing, dear God, this is everything that I can think of that's troubling me. And you write it out. Oh, it looks real foolish. But what's the difference between you writing out something and, 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 and entitling it, dear God, and leaving it for God to read, then somebody holding on to a black book called my personal journal or diary? What's the difference? Come on, talk to me, somebody. What is the difference? You can write in a journal and talk to yourself. Come on here, somebody. What's the difference between somebody going live and ain't nobody on their camera or ain't nobody viewing them, but yet they go and post something and say, hey, y'all, I just want to come on here to talk to y'all, but ain't, you don't know if nobody going to view you or not. What is the difference? He take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and that word confound means to mess up the way you think, yeah. to, 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 to switch it up some. So when he... Put it out when you put the ladder out there. You write it out there and put it on your bed. Leave it on your table. Leave a leave a empty glass right there. Say here you go, God. Sometimes you got to do something that makes you so amazed. I was driving today, and I, I, I was at work. I was driving, and as I was driving, I was thinking on something, and in my mind, I said. I'm about to speak this. But my mouth started saying, you ain't finna say nothing. And that's what came out. You ain't finna say nothing. You ain't finna say nothing. And I was thinking something, and I'm still not gonna tell y'all what I'm thinking. You wanna know something that I ain't gonna tell Because what I was thinking on is something greater than what I have ever thought on before in my life. So I knew that that thought was not a thought of me. That had to be a thought that come from the kingdom. Because there was a king-like thought that came to me, and my mouth was getting ready to, to, to just release it, but my mouth starts telling me while I'm driving, you ain't finna say nothing. And I ain't finna say nothing, because I'm gonna hold my peace, and I'm gonna watch God bring it to pass, and I'm gonna walk in the manifestation of it. And when I'm talking about I, that's not to exclude my wife, but she's included, but this one here is a personal thing. There are some things that you got to make personal. David said this right here. I'm not looking at the army that you gave me, God. Because the men, because David could have easily went back to those men. And he could have went to them because apparently, watch this. When he went to the men, he could have said, look, Saul is out to destroy me. I want y'all to help me to destroy Saul. But he said, no, I'm going to God on this. Is there anything in your life lately that you really got to go to God on? You don't want nobody else included in it. Matter of fact, you don't even want the pastor included in it. You want to go to God and go to God by yourself and say, you know what, pastor, I appreciate you for the word. Is about me and God. This one here is on me and God. I appreciate you for all of the preaching and teaching and, and, and everything you've done in the instruction. Thank you. You led me to the water, but let me drink on my own. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And don't rush me to drink. Because I might not drink like everybody else. But I want to know do God hear me? The answer is yes. He hears you. In your secret, he hears you. When you're struggling, he hears you. The problem is we don't learn how to talk to him when everything's going good. Okay. We talk to him more when everything's going good. We ain't never got to worry about talking to him about the bad because we know he already taken care of that. If we practice talking to him like this, good morning, God. See, ain't nothing going on when I first wake up. Not that I know of. Or whatever's going on, guess what? Last night, I don't know nothing. I was sweet. Yeah. So this morning, some dude hit me. It's new to me. Because right. I ain't wake up this morning with last night. Mm -hmm. Or whatever went on yesterday. Forget that. Yesterday is gone. Yeah. So it's good morning. How you doing, Lord? Yeah. I love you. Thank you for protecting me. Yeah. Thank you for keeping my mind. Yeah. And then, I can't forget what I said to him. Because guess what? When I told him, thank you for teaching.
deep in my mind, I know something is coming to try and take my mind. So I'm thanking him in advance for keeping it. All right. But I can't forget that I went to him this morning. Yeah. I can't do like the scripture say, I behold myself in a mirror. And then when I leave, I forget what matter of man I am. Mm. You always have to remember the way you came and approached God, you got to leave with that same approach. Okay. You, you came and approached him with confidence and with faith. When you walk away from it, you better have confidence and faith. Knowing that he heard you, yeah. knowing that he hear you, and knowing that he answered you. Yeah. And the answer may be yes, uh -huh. no, hold up. Stay right there. Uh -huh. Don't go nowhere else. Right. Sometimes that answer may be, it's going to hurt. Ooh. You don't want double do. The answer might come and God say, it's time to long suffer. Uh -huh. You got to suffer long. He might come and answer you and say, can you stay in my stretchy? Because in order for me to put something in you, I have to stretch you so You got all stuff in there, and I'm going to stretch you so that stuff can pop out of there, and I can put what I need to put in you. Yes, Lord. Woo. I wish somebody would be honest and say, Lord, I don't mind the stretching, but it do hurt when you're stretching me beyond my proportion. Yeah. My mind hurts sometimes when you're telling me to leap out, take a lunch out there into the deep. I'm trying to go there, and God, my mind just, woo. God keeps saying, I want you to stretch your mind, stretch your mind, stretch your mind. God, I don't stretch it. Leroy will laugh. He said, I'm going to stop coming here. It's too much rain over in this house. <laughs> he might be my nephew, but that man right there, I don't talk to him. He's giving me rain over Thank God for rain. You know, that's something I had thought about. What you thought about? I can't remember right now. What? You already have seen the area. Okay. <laughs> well, let's look at this thing and let's help the dogs. David said, I look on my right hand and beheld. That means I saw. There was no man. Of course not, David. And there was no man that would know me. Of course not, Brandy. Because what are your friends? When you need vindication. What are your foes when God got you in a place called solitary? All that's in the cave with you is just you and your voice. And you better know when David was in that cave, when he said, I cried out, it wasn't no. <laughs> You better know it was some reverberation going on. He cried out. Cried out of his soul. Cried from the, not the top surface, but from the depths of it. It ain't really a cry until you cry and your head hurt, your eyes swole, your face is running, and you don't care who calls it. You ain't gonna stop crying and ask the phone and go, hey, how you doing? That ain't a real cry. Oh, Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I'm gonna talk over here. A real cry is when boo hoo hoo ain't the answer. If I'm giving it to God, I'm ugly, but I don't care. I ain't got time to brush my teeth because I'm crying. I ain't got time to wipe the boogles. I'm crying. I ain't gonna worry about the snot running. I'm crying. I ain't worried about who on the other line. I'm crying. I ain't worried about who in the other room. I'm crying. And I don't care who hear me. Because I'm crying. Call me a crybaby. Watch how God move real fast in. I don't need a pacifier. I need the sanctifier. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. It's 2023, and we got a lot of saints who are portray that they, they super with God. That's only because it's tax season. And after tax season, you're gonna find out they don't they don't be talking about God. I decrease that you may increase. For what? For what? Saints, you want to buy a house? Mm -hmm. Buy property. Okay. Buy, buy, buy cheap houses. Mm -hmm. Buy that. Fix 
pick some up. Invest in yourself. Saints, you want a, you want a new car? For what? Ain't nothing wrong with the one you got. If you don't need more room, don't go looking for more room. Things are going to change. But you want God to hear you on stuff. But when was the last time we went to God and just said, give me more faith. Help my unbelief. Y'all be talking to me. Huh? Help my unbelief. Not unbelief because I don't believe you because I'm tired of being broke. Forget being broke. Forget that because guess what? One day we all going to go back to being broke. Because broke you came in this world and broke you going to leave in this world. They always told me naked you came, naked you going to leave. Some of these folks leaving their caskets and got good clothes on. But guess what? When them clothes fall off your body and when your folks leave and they going to reopen your casket and flip you out your clothes, guess what? Ain't nothing left but meat on them bones and after a couple of days pass by and the bugs and the beetles and everything else eat up on that flesh and the carcass eat you up, guess what? You're going to have number bones. So bone you come, bone you going to be. It does not matter. So stop going to God and say, Lord, I need this. I want this. I need that. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And start asking God to give you stuff that's going to last but eternal. Ask him to give you something that's going to help you and enrich you and empower you and enable you to move into a world when folks fail you. You won't walk around here with your head hanging down, but you'll scratch your shoulder back and you'll be able to quote this scripture and not just quote it, but live in it and walk in it and say, if God be for me, who can be against me? God ain't going to talk to you right now. Because if God is for you, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. If God is for you, he'll never let you go hungry. Because if he clothed the lily of the field, how much more? And grandmothers, I'm here to tell you right now, you can stop praying for them grandbabies. They're going to be all right. All you need to do now is start seeing the manifestation of them being all right. That means don't let them go out the door and you let fear go out the door with them. No, you give them what you know. And if that means you got to encourage them, you and you don't say bye bye, you say I see you later. Yeah, right. I wish I could talk to some folks here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I tell my son all the time. Mm-hmm. We don't use bye bye in my house. All right. I even tell Brandy, ain't no bye bye. Bye bye for folks who won't plan on coming back. Yeah. See you later. For them folks that know I'm gonna see you again. Why? Because he gave me some promises. And I cannot get out of here until my promises come to pass. You're not going to leave this earth until everything God promised you comes to pass. I don't care if the devil like it or he don't. The devil cannot destroy you. Life cannot end for you until everything that the Lord has spoken concerning you and your life comes to pass. Right? Yes. It has to come to pass. But what about the scripture that said I can die before my time? You can. When you get out here and tempt the Lord. That's why the Bible say, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord, thy God. You can die before your time. That's when you get on God's bad side. Where the scripture say, He's a merciful God, but He can be a terrible God if you fall into His hands. In other words, He can become real angry with you to where he can destroy you. And he can, everything he has set up for you, for you to have, he'll go and give it to another. That's why we got so much jealousy among people. Yeah. Not just families, okay. but it's among people, period. It's in workplaces. It's even in the houses. You got some husbands that's jealous of their wives. Because they praying and asking God for a certain thing, and the wife over there praying and just asking God to fix the marriage. But he over there praying for a deliverance, and watch this, the more she praying for God to fix it, he praying to get out of it, or she praying to get out of it, he praying to fix it, and you got chaos in there, because the two is not on one accord, so how can the two agree, except that, how can they walk together, rather, if they're not in agreement? And when you're not in agreement, of course your house going to be in the uproar. Of course your house going to be torn from the floor. I don't care how you feel about it. Of course that you're going to go one way and somebody going the other way. And God is simply saying, ain't hey, now one of y'all following my way. Oh, yes, amen. amen. This is the thing that we do. We want God to fix us. Only when somebody messes
messing with us. Fix us. No, let's be real. No, God fixed them because they messing with me. Yeah. But let's see how God view it. I'm going to fix you while they messing with you. Because if I fix them, you're going to get a problem. So let me fix you and then I'll, then I'll let you how. I'll show you rather how to fix them. Yeah. I don't want that, God. I don't want that to be done. I don't want to love nobody. I want to hold on to what they did to me. I want them to feel my wrath. I want them to feel what I have to feel. Sorry. It ain't going to work like that. It's not going to work like that. David said, I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my refuge. And my portion in the land of the living. Watch this. You my refuge and other place. In other words, you the place that I can run to. You are my hiding place. You my shelter when I don't have anybody there to block for me. I'm going to tell you, you know when God on your side. It's when all kind of stuff is going on. On your street. You come outside. They did drive by, but all of a sudden it seemed like they stopped when they got by your house. And they went on here and turned off. Everybody else out took some bullet shots. But your house, you just stopped. You better know God on your side. Better know when you're living in the projects, God on your side. The way they're breaking in folks' projects, breaking in their houses. Folks on housing authority. And when you leave your house, you got crooked maintenance people. You got management that feel like they can just go in your house, especially if they see the stuff you putting in there. And yet when they go in there, they can't take nothing. Everything is just too much God to take. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. They go in there and wish they could get. Man, I gotta come back and get this. Can't get it. Or if they do go and grab something, they got to put it back because too many people that all of a sudden came outside. You better know God on your side. God on your side because when your, when your CCTV cameras are not showing in real time and they jump offline and, and there could be people in the area breaking in houses. But yet it's still God won't let them break in yours. You better know God on your side. You're praying now, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. He heard that. All right. Don't despise the minute things when it comes down to God in you. Yeah. God is hearing you. You're asking God for certain things in life. Get yourself ready for them. Make room for them. Put yourself in position for them. Start doing what you need to do so when it comes, you can appreciate it. Because everything that the Father gives, it comes from His good pleasure. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Everything that God wants to do, it's coming in a good way and it's there for it to be pleasurable. In other words, you can be able to love what God has done for you. The, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow with it. Oh, come on here, somebody. Right. David said, you my refuge. Mm -hmm. Of course, David. Attend unto my cry. For I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors. For they are stronger than I. Wrong. Mm -hmm. David, that's the way you think. None of David's persecutors were stronger than him. Because the biggest man was Goliath. And if that giant could not take out David alone, come on here. If a bear that David had taken the lamb from could not take out David. If the lion that David went inside of his mouth and took the lamb out of the lion's mouth Stretched his mouth wide open and put the other hand in there. And God gave him strength to do that. If that didn't take him out. Okay. Come on here, David. Why are we talking like David in Psalms 142? 
Why are we feeling like this? Because on the human side of us, which is our flesh, our flesh is saying this right here to us, but then our spirit is saying, I need the flesh to die so I can increase in you and I can work God's will. Because what? It's only the spirit that will help you with your infirmity and it will make intercession for you with groanings which cannot be uttered. The spirit yokes with you, comes together with you, and then the spirit will tell you, look, what you're going through, you ain't got to take it by yourself. Give it over to me. It's my job to take what you're going through and go and make sure the will of God is done properly in your life. Because you don't know what you should pray for as you ought to. Give me what you want to say and trust me. Because that's why I'm here. If Jesus did not trust yeah, God, if Jesus didn't trust the Holy Ghost, he never would have released it on the day of Pentecost. He would have released it. If he thought the Holy Ghost would go and say something contrary to what he does and who he is, he never would have released it or sent it to come here. So he knew that he could trust the fact that the, the comforter, he said, watch this, he said, yeah, this is what Jesus said, if you pray the Father in my name, I was, he going to say another comforter, one that won't leave you comfortless. And he is the spirit of truth. He don't just speak truth, but he leads you and guides you into the way of truth. And when he tells you that no weapon formed against you is going to properly you better believe it. If he tells you that you don't have to worry about it, watch this. Some people might not like this. But there are some folks, I don't care how saved and sanctified you are, how set apart you are. There are just some saints that are going to go through a struggle where you're going to have to go to your cattle community agency. I wish I could talk to you here. You're going to have to learn how to lean on some folks because God will set people and appoint people and then he would anoint folks. And that is some money that need, that got your name on it that you need to get your bills paid. Because I don't care if the church won't pay your bill. Don't go and look and down on the church and they ain't helping me and I've been giving, 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 giving. No, the devil is a lie. If I can't get nothing back, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to God and say, God, wherever you lead me, that's where I'm going. And if it's to the cattle community agency, guess what? You go down and you go with faith, believing that God got a way made for you. And guess what? Tell them folks the truth. Tell them folks about your trouble. But know one thing that God is going to work it out in your favor. And when he work it out in your favor, you better know one thing. Don't matter what nobody else got to say about you. We all need help in some form. Come on here, somebody. That is your blessing with your name on it. We all need help somewhere. Let's be real. You think the clothes you wear or your designer clothes? No, you ain't designed it. You might have picked out the outfit, but you're not the designer. <laughs> you still leaning on somebody else. I feel like shouting right there. You still wearing somebody else. You still getting help from somebody else. And I don't care how much of Stacey Adams I love. I don't care how much I love that clothing line and that shoe line. Guess what? Stacey Adams ain't never saw me no doubt saying, Derek, you done bought for me all your life. Hmm. Since you knew what I, who I was. Uh. But I just wanted to sit up here and just send you a free collection of samples, huh? Sample this and wear this and model this. No, they never did me like that. Hmm. So I'm still leaning on Stacey. Y'all yeah. ain't gonna talk to me here. I'm still depending on my wife to give me another pair of Stacey Adams. Come on here. Oh, uh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me? Yeah, I love Stacey Allen. <laughs> I'm original gangster. <laughs> I love my Stacey Allen. <laughs> I'm talking about 3P, 5P, 4P, it don't matter. Give me the shirt, the vest, the tie, and all that. And don't forget to get my uh, cuff link. Come on here, somebody. But you think they're gonna sit up here and, 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 and send me stuff? No. So, even if I fall short, and Goodwill got some Stacey Allen, guess what they're gonna do? I'm gonna leave you no Goodwill. And if they tell me that I need to write a letter, a hardship letter, guess what I'll be doing? I'll be writing a hardship letter so I can get that Stacey Allen. I don't care what y'all say about me. Right. Pastor, I don't know, borrow a suit today. You so right, but I ain't got to get it back. Amen. Come on here, somebody. In school, we used to have to wear hand-me-downs. I ain't talking to nobody here. Anybody had hand-me-downs? Money. 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 Who? Hand me that. You wore your socks? We weren't blessed and fortunate enough like
like most people. To have socks that you can wear and got 10, 20 pair of socks. Well, you can wear two, three socks at one time. No, you want them one long sock and they were either red, white, black, or red, white, blue. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. They were three strike knee high stocking socks. They were some compression socks. They helped you with your ankle. They were some supporting socks. They helped you with your feet. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And the minute one of them socks got a hole in you, turn inside out and wear it on the other side. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. But God was still good. And he heard us. Yeah. How you know he heard us? Because most of us right now got a sock drawer. Y'all just put talk to me over there. You got a sock drawer now. At first, you only had one sock. Yeah. And we used to wear socks so bad to where they used to bust on the toe. Let me go and give you some revelation of how I talk to you to look. Right. They used to bust on the back of the heel. Yeah. Uh huh. But guess what? We used to take it and stretch it out and tuck it. Yeah. That's what we did. We tucked it, tucked that sock, and we brought it from here to here. And guess what? By the time you get through washing it with that bar soap, and you wash the hole in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> See, we had to do knuckles. Because grandma ain't let you hold no scrub tub. Yeah. She ain't let you hold rubber. Uh uh. Now, she ain't let you sit in her big old metal pan neither. That was a baptism pan. You couldn't sit in that, because that was for her to roll up her pants so they can sit like this and scrape. Hey, hey, hey. We didn't get the privilege to do that. But one thing that she did let us do was wash our own sock. Yeah. And when our socks used to get so messed up, coming from the knee down to the thigh, I mean to the to the calf, until they became ankles. And one day I remember I went to school. I ain't had nothing but just a ring. I ain't care. I made sure I kept my pants in a certain way. So if I hit y'all on sock, and I used to get bad, yeah, I do. No, they see the real. I got some socks on. No, my feet sweaty. Didn't want to dress out in gym. Mama had me wearing bobo shoes. Y'all know what bobo shoes is? Huh? Bobo shoes is them shoes that be black or white, and they got this. They they call them Charlie Browns. Okay. Because they had the black nose on. They was Charlie Brown. That was the kind of shoe that if you get on the gym floor, you leave a black tie streak across it. Because when you walking with the ball, and you get to run and pick it. They help you pick up speed. You better not try to stop, though. Because you sliding all under the goal. And coach used to tell us, Bowden, get them church shoes off the floor. I felt bad. We just now waxed the gym floor. I left black streaks across the floor. Sliding like I got on here. Okay. Everybody talk about me laugh now. Cry later. Kids these days are more fortunate, but God heard us. Because now when I look in my closet, I got all kinds of shoes. I still got shoes that I don't want to even wear, period. Because I know God heard me. Lord, I need a better shoe collection. Might have took me a while to get it. But when I look back over my life, and when you look back over your life, what did God do for you? Did he hear you? Yes, he heard you. And if he heard you for back then up until now, you better know he going to hear you up to now all the way to then. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he does not change. Yes, Thank you. He's not hard of hearing that he can't hear. You pray for deliverance. Learn how to wait till it comes. But while you're waiting on deliverance, learn how to make room and get rid of stuff that's holding you back to keep you from getting deliverance. I want to be free. Well, if you want to be free, guess what? You got to break away from what's holding you. I want to go to church. That's what they say. I'm going back to church. Well, get that man out your bed, Saturday. Get that woman out of your bed, Saturday. And come Sunday, you won't roll over and look at and behave the fact that you got to go to church and you're scared because you don't want God to read you. Hey, babe, I'm coming over. Not tonight, you ain't. What's wrong with you? Go, I ain't playing with you tonight. I tried to marry you. You don't want to marry. I'm gone. Huh? Baby, I don't like me to do. Sorry. Hey, buddy, how you doing, Levi? It's been a long time. Girl, why you come up in my life all of a sudden while I'm waiting on God to do?
do something for me. You just showed up. I'm here to tell you right now, whenever there's something God is getting ready to do for you, you better keep your eyes booked because Satan coming. All right. All right. I'm closing him. Satan coming. Oh, yeah. He coming. Yeah. I ain't been Oh, yeah, you've been that lucky. You just ain't looking. <laughs> That's why you can't see what it is. And thank God you ain't been that lucky because God don't operate on luck. You ain't been that blessed. <laughs> I ain't gonna never mother fat. I'm about to mess with it right now. They saying, don't do it, Pastor. Don't you do it. Mother Pastor, I slay every demon in the name of Jesus. Walk up in here. I tell you, I'm gonna talk to you. They're gonna speak it and talk. But, first John, I'm closing. I said, I'm gonna work my way down. Chapter 5, 14 verse. This is your confidence right here that we have in him. That if we ask some things, is that what it said? Some things. Most things. Just a third of things. It, huh, what kind of thing? Any. My question is, if you can ask anything, then this is my question. Is there anything to hold for God? If you can ask it. My thoughts and your thoughts are not the same, so you still can't go and ask him nothing above his thoughts. You can ask him anything. Anything. I want to incriminate myself on live. Somebody might try to turn me in for something that was done too many years ago in my life that I should have never did. I ain't get caught. It wasn't in Louisiana, so don't try to get me. But I did do something. And I'm going to be honest. I went and I asked God for some permission to do it. And he told me. Because <laughs> I told him, if you let me do this, I promise I'll do what you say do. And guess what my promise landed me? My promise landed me with preparation. I had to go to jail. That was the only way he knew he was going to get that promise. Because he knew one thing. He called my name when I wrote that blunt back in the early 2000. And I was, he called my name and I got scared to drop my weed and my blunt. They ain't scared to talk about it, but I talk about it. I dropped it and took off running. I said, not now. He said, dude, dude, I took a I told my uncle, Uncle Eddie, and he said, he calling you, not me. <laughs> that we <what he> told him. <laughs> he said, you go back to your house, because I got somebody at my house, and I don't even call I don't even mess with my stuff. It's Sunday. I wanted to smoke. <laughs> he wanted to call me. And it was pretty, and I know what it was. It was about that promise. Because I'm back now from another state. And what I did, I should have did. But he allowed me to do it. He didn't give me the right to do it. He just stepped back and let my own selfish self do what I went to him and asked him. Because really what I asked him to do was not right. And he showed me. This is what I can allow you to do. Even though you're asking me. He's not agreeing to it. He just probably sat there and told me. If you want to, go ahead. But I'm going to let grace and mercy help you out. Because you really should have got caught up. But thanks be unto God that I did. When I look back at my life, I felt guilty a lot of years about what I did. And when he saved my heart and my soul, I really felt guilty. I felt real bad, y'all. I did. I knew I was a wicked man. I was young and evil. And it didn't make no sense. That's why I tell people the truth. If God can get me, he can get your son. I guarantee you, if it was, ever came down to it, if I was still stuck in that old foolishness, most of these people wouldn't be existing. I'd be the next hitman in Louisiana. I'd be my guy. Blow you up. I'll get you. I'm not going to get done. I'll visit your mom. I'm just going on and leave your lap. I've been here. But thank God for salvation. Y'all won't hear me do that. Thank God for true salvation. 
See, that was too innocent. Y'all be scared of why people ain't gonna get delivered because you're too scared to tell it. I'm gonna tell on me. But God delivered me. And when when he called my name, I knew it was about that promise I made to him. And I'm not ready. And then all of a sudden it rose the city. I get caught up with something. I go to jail. Didn't even do the crime. They told me they got a warrant for my arrest. How you get a warrant for my arrest and I don't even hang out in Bozier? I'm just over here visiting. And I, I shouldn't have been there, but I was there. And they tell me they got a warrant for my arrest. From where? Come on, I don't know. We got to go down. I go down there. They done booked me. What's supposed to be an overnight thing over the weekend and I get out? First thing Monday or Tuesday, I'm standing before a TV talking to a judge. The judge tell me, that's my arraignment. How I'm going to plead? I don't plead nothing. I ain't getting nothing. But when them cages slam, boom. Reality set in. Y'all don't hear me. I went down on my knees. I went down on the side of that bunk. And I cried. And I asked God to help me. And I really didn't know him like that. So I went to him in the name of my mama and my grandmama. And I said, the God of my grandmama and my mama, whoever you are, please help me. That, that officer came back, told me I had a free call to make. I called one of the family members. They said, uh-uh. I ain't going to call their name. They just told me no. They not going to do it. They told me that's my baby. I made it. I got the lady. Mm. Guess what? Reality set in. Mm -hmm. I went to court. My uncle was there. My sister was there. My mama was there. Mm -hmm. When I went to court, they told me 10 years. My heart dropped. Told me if I do eight with good behavior, I can get out of two year parole. Mm. But I thought about them 10 years. Right. I went back, I said, I'm going to kill myself. That's what I say. I'm going to kill myself. I ain't going to do no 10 years in here, and they're going to rob me behind my back. Mm -hmm. You know what that behind my back means. I'm keeping the PG-13. I'm too little. I'm going to look at you. You ain't getting my pot of gold. Right. I want to scare her, but come on, man. When you got to fight somebody 260 and 300, yeah. I, ta -ta, you might as well go knock me out. Because uh -huh. I ain't even going to play with your hands. Right. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm being shipped, and I don't know nobody from here. And when I went back in that thing, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Come on now. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He spoke to me and told me, Jesus. keep the faith. All right. You've been studying up in here. You've been praying for prisoners up in here. You've been sitting down reading the Bible scripture. You went to the Bible class. My wife will tell you, I got all kinds of Bible certificates. Yeah. I went to anger management and everything. You went and, and I, it took a while for anger management to kick in, y'all, but it's still kicking in. You know, still working. Yeah. yeah. But I went and did what I was supposed to do. Yeah. And God told me, he reminded me of that promise. And then he cut me free the same time they sentenced me. Ooh, Jesus. Hey, God, you don't hear what I'm saying. My uncle Lonnie can tell you. I called Lonnie the same night. Mm -hmm. And Lonnie said, wait a minute, where you at? Mm -hmm. I said, man, come get me. Right. I'm out. He said, no, no, no. He said, I was in court, and they said, you had 10 years. And I said, no, you better come get me before 12 o'clock, because they're going to put me out on the highway, and I'm going to have to walk back, and I don't know, somebody might kill me. Come get me, man, because I don't want to stay another second down here. The guard looked at me. The prisoner guard said, because we call him a free man. He said, I give you 99% out of 100, you'll be back. I looked at him, I said, you a lie. I said, and the only way I'm coming back is to preach the gospel. And then when I got out, y'all know what I did? Huh? I'm going to tell you. I went and joined Mike Barber Prison Ministries. Because when I got out, I didn't really have nobody to look to to help me stay on this road. To help keep the fire burning. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. God heard everything. I, I asked God to get me out of there. But God said, I want to talk to you before I let you talk to me about me getting you out. I'm going to do what you asked me to do, but can you do what I'm just asking you to do? And if you get out, you might fall, but get yourself right back up. You might stumble, but get back up. You might fumble, but get back up. You might see, because that's part of your nature, but get back up and keep my spirit burning in you and don't let the fire die. Yeah. Woo. Thank you, God. Woo. Oh, I enjoyed this path I'm on with the Lord. I enjoy watching God route miracles and route signs and wonders.
problems. Yeah. And do things and speak through me. I enjoy that. Still do. Yeah. But I'm becoming more seasoned with the Lord now. Right. To where I look back at everything. Mm -hmm. Thinking about it. And then it all stuff. It brought me through. I'm talking about me. Yeah. He brought me through a lot. It's us. A whole lot. And when I tell y'all, I don't look like nothing that I've been through. Nothing. I got my health. I got my strength. I know other preachers that 40 some years old, suffering with diabetes. Some of them done been on dialysis. Some sprung out on drugs. Some been shot. But I look at me and I say, God, you've been good to me. You better understand, God answers your prayers. It's the other things that you're waiting on. But can you wait? And while you're waiting, the Bible say, wait on the Lord and be a good cheer. Again, I say, wait on the Lord. And then the scripture goes again and say, if you wait on the Lord, he shall strengthen your heart. No good thing will he withhold for them that love him and walk upright or walk accordingly to his word. It can be just that one thing that's stopping everything from unfolding in your life. And sometimes you just have to battle with that one thing. It can be that one little demon that's holding you back from having everything that God promised for you. In that year, that season, that moment. And you have to fight to stay with God because this fight here is getting harder and harder. Oh yes. I'm not going to tell you living saved ain't no hard thing. It is hard. Because it comes with some heavy restrictions and instructions. Oh yeah, come on. Let's go and go. Let's go to the club. Yeah. Let's go and go party. Come on, man. You can go on and do this. This ain't oh, God going to forgive you. You can go on and do that. that. Don't worry about what they saying over there. They just talking, man. Don't fold mess up too. Don't, don't listen to that preacher, that giant turkey. He ain't, he ain't talking all. He just talking, man. You don't, you don't know what he do behind clothes, though. You don't know what he got going on in his house. Well, that ain't your business. Your business is to hear the word and let the word transform you. And if people got enough energy to tell you negative stuff about a positive thing, then you got to understand you ain't the right type of people. Man, that's the reason why I don't go to church now. Girl, you finna go back to church? For what? You can go and go, I ain't going. Okay. Make sure you remember that when I got to go to heaven. You ain't going. Don't ask, can you go? Because I can't take you with me. I'm sorry. We can't ride up in there. All right. Girl, because you got folks that'll stay right next door to you, and guess what? They'll mess you up. Mm. They be out there watering their lawn. You out here praying in the name of Jesus. I don't want my grass to grow, and your grass ain't growing. Mm. You know why your grass ain't growing? Because you won't cut the grass. Mm. You won't, you just let it do what it does. You won't move the trees back. And, and, and prune them and trim them and let the sunlight come in. You won't water nothing. You won't do nothing. You just won't grass to grow. You, you, you bought this house on dirt. I'm tired of water coming in my house. Ain't nobody tell you about a house built on a slab in a flood zone? Come on. But you, I'm gonna shut down the shop with this house. I got a six bedroom, three bathroom, full bathroom. I got a living room, a den. I got, I got a, 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 a main cave and all. What? For what? Did you look at the, 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 the structure, the survey, the blueprint? This house cost me three hundred thousand dollars, but it's in a flood zone. You know rain got to come. <laughs> we gotta be wisdom. You ask God for a house, be Pacific. Be Pacific. I said be Pacific. Be Pacific. He hear you. This is the petition. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever, 
We ask. We know. That's genosko. That's the Greek word for genosko. That word know that in the Greek is called genosko. Say that, genosko. That means you know without absolutely knowing. That means without a shadow of a doubt, you know it. In other words, that means the devil can't make you doubt it because you know too much about it. Have you ever been just that assured that you know what you know, that you know that you know? That's the no -so. It's not the word Oda. Oda is from the Old Testament. And Genosco is from the New, which is the Greek. So you have Oda, which is Hebrew. Genosco, which is Greek. So he said, we know that we have a petition that we desire of him. We understand it. We have a three. This petition. Whatever you petition, and if you notice about a petition, that's a document. In the courts, when they file a petition, there's a summon coming out of the petition. It's time when you petition God, you summon Jesus. Bring Jesus into your courtroom. I guarantee you, he'll prove to you like the saints of old say, he'll be a lawyer in the courtroom. Petition him. Mothers, petition him in your house. Fathers, petition him. Summon him to come on in. When you get ready to file it before the clerk of court, which is heaven itself, when your request is being made known, summon Jesus. Put him down there as a witness. He won't lie. Put him down there as, as, as your lawyer. You'll win your case. Oh, yes. Put him, matter of fact, put him as the judge. He'll write it off. Y'all ain't gonna talk. I got the clothes. Come on, give God praise. I know you're gonna win. He'll write it off. 